I have many Bibles, and particularly about three of them I read from continually. But all three of those Bibles are, have two passages of Scripture marked at the same place. All three of them. They're marked at Psalm chapter number 23 and Revelation chapter number 21. That's where we'll be reading from this morning. The reason I have marked my Bible as those places, those are the two passages of scriptures that I traditionally read every time I have a graveside service or have a memorial service, I'll traditionally read those two passages of scripture. This morning, I want to interest you in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. Revelation 20. If you found it, say amen. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And all of God's people said, Father, make me a blessing to your people today. And may I magnify your Son, who's a wonderful Savior. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Revelation 21 and 22 gives us a description of our eternal home where we're going to spend eternity, we that know the Lord Jesus Christ. I remind you that the first on earth started with a garden scene, a beautiful city. And I can remind you for those that know Christ, we're going to end up in a beautiful city one of these places, one of these days. Chapter 5 is a summary of 20, chapters 20, chapter, I'm sorry, verse number 5 is a summary of chapters 21 and 22. In verse number 6, he says, it is done, it's over, he's done things, it's been accomplished. And what God started in the book of Genesis, God's going to finish up in the book of the Revelation. Let me, if I could, just pay att close attention, this will not be on the screen, I don't believe I gave this to Drew to put on the screen. I want you to know the comparison between Genesis and Revelation. In Genesis, there's the creation of the heaven and the earth. Can I get an amen to that? I'm going to preach, next, I'm going to preach tomorrow, next Sunday morning on why it's important that we believe in creation. And God has given me something wonderful. I think that will in, in, encourage you. In the New Testament, at the last, we have a new heaven and a new earth that God has made for us. In the Genesis account, we have the sun being created. In the Revelation account, there's no need for the sun. In Genesis, we have night being established. In the Revelation, there is no need for the night. In Genesis, we have the seas being created. In the Revelation, John said there's no more sea. And that doesn't mean a cotton biggin thing to you unless you understood where John was when he wrote this. John was exiled on the Isle of Patmos, a little small island of Athens there, and all the storms raging. John said, no more seas, no more troublesomes. They're there. Genesis, we have the account of the curse being announced. Revelation, there'll be no more curse. In Genesis, we have the account of death entering in. In the Revelation, thank God, there's no more death. In the Genesis account, we have man driven from paradise. In Revelation, we have man except in the paradise. In the Genesis account, we have sorrow and pain beginning. But in the Revelation account, there's no more tears or pain. Can't we sing this morning, what a day that will be when my Jesus, I shall see. I want to give you something that's burning on my heart about heaven this morning. And you know, the sad thing, the sad thing is, is Christians have forgot the reality of heaven. We've forgotten about the existence of hell. For the most part, we don't hear anything about that. But we've forgotten of the reality of heaven. First of all, I want to tell you this, that heaven is a real place. Look with me with the first few words of John in Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw. John said, I saw this. I know God is showing things to John. Look at chapter, chapter number 21. Look at verse number 2. And I, John, saw. 
I cannot tell you the number of times in the book of the Revelation that phrase. I wish, I wish I'd account. I didn't. What John says, I saw, I saw, I saw. I know here's a story I've heard Nathan tell before, and I've told this story too many years ago about a woman who was deeply concerned about her husband's salvation and she kept praying for him to get saved and praying for him to get saved and he wouldn't listen to her about coming to know Christ like some of you have prayed for your children to get saved and some of them maybe here this morning, they're lost, you prayed for them. So she got a deep, convert, uh, a, dick, a deep concern for him and one day she got so concerned that she just, she went over to the pastor's house before she left the, to go see the pastor to pray for her husband, she put a note on the kitchen table where her husband was coming from work and you'd see the note and the note said, did John see you? And she went over to the refrigerator and she took a note, did John see you? And she walked in the bedroom and put a note, excuse me, the bathroom and put a note, did John see you? And she walked in the bedroom and left a note, did John see you? And the husband came home and he came to the door and he called for his wife and she wasn't there. And he looked at that note in all those four places and said, the note said, did John see you? And he, it was troubling to him. She couldn't, he couldn't figure out, where's my wife? What's happened? And the note kept ringing his mind, did John see you? And finally, the phone rang, and the man answered the phone. It was the pastor, and the pastor said, Sir, said, this is the pastor of your wife, and your wife is over here at my home right now, and she's weeping her eyes out. She's weeping for you. She's sorry for you because she read in the book of the Revelation that John said, I saw. And she said, he wants to know, did John see you there at that place? Man, come to conviction and came to know Christ. I asked you this morning, when John saw in the new heavens, did he see you there? I saw, we were talking about a real place. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus, please, when he said this. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't lie to you about this. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'd go prepare a place for you. Come on. If I prepare a place for you, I will do what? I'll come again, receive them. I said that where I am, there you may be also. Heaven is a real place. We'll have real bodies that won't gain weight. Jesus arose from the dead with a glorious body that can walk through doors and walk through buildings and still eat, have a good time. He can do all those things. It'll be a different existence that we'll have, but it's going to be a real existence. We'll really be there. Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration were real people that they saw and really knew them because they were real people living in a real land. Steve, when Stephen died, he saw a real Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Heaven, first of all, is a real place. Heaven is a what? Second thing I want to tell you about heaven, it's a remaining place. He, he said in Revelation 21:1, the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. Everything that you and I know here and own here, for the most part, except what we've sent ahead to heaven, is going to be done away with one of these days. Everything, no matter what it is. But heaven is a remaining place. The first heaven and earth were passed away. I thank God for everything I've enjoyed in life, and I thank God that we're to, to enjoy all the things God gives us in life, and there are precious things to us. But all those things we have, with the exception of a few of those things, are just simply temporal. They're not eternal whatsoever. I want you to listen to the writer of Paul as he writes to the Corinthian believers. The words should be on the screen for you because it's easier for you to have them there and have you to turn with them and me wait for you, you wait for me. Listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians 4 verses uh, through chapter 5 verse 1. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, with a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. There's something eternal awaiting us, a place in the heavens. It's a remaining place. That's why Jesus told everyone to do this in Matthew 6, 19-21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves not break through and steal. For your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Listen to the words of Paul to Timothy and those believers there. He said, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, 
the living God, which giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they may do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to distribute, room to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. They may lay hold upon eternal life or upon eternal things. We are listening to me. Everyone's looking for a good investment. Can I get an amen to that? And I'm hoping next year, my whatever I have invested, I hope it does good. Hope I can uh, get some more than what I've been getting over the last few years of drawing on things I've invested in. Well, I hope that I can use those things to honor Christ and have some sense of uh, more security of maybe doing some other things. Whatever our security, of course, is in the Lord. But one of the best places you can investigate, ladies and gentlemen, or excuse me, invest is in the local church. What we're doing here is eternal church and in souls. Did you know last Thursday night we had one man saved in jail last Thursday night? See, listen to me. There's only one life. Come on. It will soon be only what's done for Christ will last. Every stain of every sin, every evidence of evil will be vanished one of these days. All of it's going to be gone one of these days. Only what we've done for Christ and things eternal are going to last. I know last Sunday night Brother Fred Adams reminded us of the blessing we have here we have, we have a great blessing here at this church, ladies and gentlemen. We have a great blessing here. I mean, all the Bibles we print and put around the world. My goodness, I, when I go to Bolivia here in a few months, I'll meet Bibles we've sent there to Bolivia to these pastors who've never in all their lifetime had a copy of the Word of God. There's 800 Bibles awaiting me there. I just wrote another pastor in Bolivia, a man that, who will be interpreting for me. I said, I know you're not, that we're shipping these Bibles to a different place from where you are. He said, I want to send you 200 Bibles. Someone gave us 200 uh, Bibles that we don't print that certain uh, translation because, it's, it's because it has a uh, trademark on it. And we can't, we can't uh, make that one. So someone gave them to me. I'm giving to him. When I see him there, he'll have those. We can give them out. What a joy. One of the most precious experiences. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Listen. If you're not involved in this, you should be this. One of the most precious experiences you can ever have when you get to heaven is when one of these days in the glory land, you see someone coming towards you that you've never met before. And they come up to you and say, thank you. And you'll say, for what? And they'll say, for that Bible you paid to produce or that Bible you put together, those missionaries you support, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you're going to rejoice in that day and thank God. I thought of this story. I've talked to you before. I might as well think to, again why it's on my mind. Years ago, I was visiting in Camden Clark Hospital in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I was standing outside of the door to visit a person in this room here, but the nurses were working with him. And I looked in the room, and there was a man with his back t- toward me. And I said, I'll have to speak to that man. I've got a few minutes. I walked in. I spoke to him, and the man walked over. And when he, he rolled over, I'm sorry, rolled over. When he rolled over, you could look literally into his throat. Cancer had eaten his body away, his skin away. You could look into his throat. I immediately bowed my head and prayed and said, uh, sir, I'll see you later. He couldn't talk. He had no means of talking. And it, it somewhat upset my stomach. I'd never seen anything like that. The next day I was back to visit the same person here. And a nurse came walking down the hallway and said, uh, she, she, she said this. I don't, I don't like this term. She said, Reverend, hey, Reverend. And I said, I'm Pastor Wall. She said, this man in this room here is my husband. I'm a nurse here. He said, a preacher stopped by to see him, or a reverend stopped by to see him yesterday. If that's you, would you stop in and see him again? He'd like to talk with you. I walked into his room. His name is Preston, Mr. Preston. I said, Mr. Preston, I know you can't talk with me, but can I communicate with you with a squeezing of hands? And I said, I'm going to ask you, if you understand what I'm saying, squeeze my hand once. He squeezed my hand. I said, uh, to say no, squeeze my hand twice. And I said, say no, and he squeezed my hand twice. I began, I communicated with him, and to make a long story short, I led him to Christ that day. He got saved. Somehow he told his wife about knowing Christ. He died. I preached his funeral. We had some people saved at his funeral. I missed his funeral. And we get to heaven. <clears throat> he'll be totally, look totally different. But somehow, I believe he'll walk up. He'll say, thank you. And of course, I've got to give glory to God for it. He'll say, thank you. You can't beat investing in things that are eternal like this church is. Heaven is a real place. Heaven's a remaining place. Thirdly, <clears throat> heaven's a ready place. He said, I saw it as a bride adorned for her husband. Say it with me, it's a ready, say it with me, it's ready. Say it's what, it's what kind of place? Ready place. As a bride adorned for her husband. I 
do a lot of weddings. Some of you folks in here that I, I have married, <laughs> always, it's always fun to me when somebody will call me up and say, Preacher Walls, will you marry me? And I'll say, best offer I ever had, but I'm already married. I love doing that. So if you call me up, that's what I'll say to you. I said, best offer, but I'm already married. <clears throat> but, but nonetheless, uh, I do a lot of weddings. I can honestly say it, it takes the bride a long time to get ready. I've never seen an ugly bride. I've seen some that came close. <laughs> I have seen some ugly grooms. <laughs> can I get an amen to that? <laughs> but she's, she's adorned herself. She's made herself ready. Nothing quite as beautiful. And that's what heaven is. It's a ready place. 2,000 years, he's been working on it since he left. C come on. If you've not observed how beautiful the place we live on, you've got your eyes blind or you haven't been looking. We live in a beautiful world. I mean, the mountain ranges and the butterflies and things of, in the summertime and springtime, the snow when we have it, the mountain peaks, the windmills in the distance, the oceans, the seas, the skies, the stars at night. It's beautiful. If God did all that in six days, you think what 2,000 years you've been working on, what's going to look like? Amen. A little girl, of course, you've heard the story about a little girl who was born blind and she went through many years of procedures of having to get her eyesight restored. And finally, after many, many years of procedures, finally one day she opened her eyes, able to see, and she said, Mama said, it's nothing like you've described to me. And she said, Honey, I didn't have the words to tell you about it. I gotta tell you, I've tried to this morning, but I don't have the words to tell you about this place, because eye is not seen, ear is not heard. It's never into the heart of the man thing which God has prepared for them which love him. Here's what I've said. Sit with me. Heaven's a real place. Sit with me. What? Heaven's a what? Heaven's a remaining place. Heaven's a... Thirdly, heaven's a ready place. Heaven's a what? And heaven is a place of relationship. He said, he shall be their God. We shall be his people. Excuse me for my English, East Tennessee English, but whoopee do. Hallelujah. Man, we're going to see him. If I don't get you excited, you need a new battery or a new life. Someone has said, and I read it, so I'll read it to you as I read it. If streets were not gold but gravel, if walls were particle boards and not jasper, if mud was knee deep and weeds were over our heads, it would still be heaven as long as Jesus is there. If you're lost, the very thought should terrify you that you're going to miss such wonder and splendor because the Bible says those that are lost are going to look out of the, out of the region of the damned and look through the transparent cities of streets of gold be able to see the joy taking in pleasant. And you've missed that because you did not know to come Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You that have not made the decision yet, your commitment to Christ. I witnessed to some people and they said to me, said, oh, don't worry about me, preacher. I'm going to hell. I said, me and my family is going to party the whole time. Can I tell you, hell's not a place where you're going to be partying. Can I tell you, the Bible says this about it. There's a man who went there that said, tell my five brethren, I never want to see them again. That's how terrible the place hell is. Hell is a place of relationship. Heaven's a place of relationship. Think of the sight that will be that when we look at everything that is made by heaven, the only thing that will be in heaven to be been made will be the scars in the hands of Jesus, and we're going to see them through all eternity remind us of the great sacrifice he made for you and for me. But heaven is a place about relationships. And you'll listen to me. I am not going to apologize for getting excited about heaven. I need to apologize. I don't get more excited about it. And I don't mean to play on your emotions, and I'm not trying to. I'm just preaching from my heart and from my experiences. But I, I, I'll just say it. I miss my sister. just about a year ago, went to be with the Lord. Some of you all have people in heaven, and even no matter how many years it's been, there's still a vacancy there, is there not? 
There just is. You, you don't ever get over that. And I don't think God intended for you to get over it. He intended you to have a longing in your soul. I want you to listen to Paul as he writes to these believers in Thessalonica. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That you sorrow not as others which have no hope. Don't sorrow that way. He said, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that? Even so also them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent these which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, and we're caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. David's going to see his child again. I believe every stillborn child is going to be there. I believe every aborted baby is going to be there. Because that con- I believe life starts at conception. Well, they look like you'll recognize them. Don't worry about it. The saved will be together. Excuse me, mom. Dad, always the question comes up, are we going to know each other? That's a silly question almost. The Bible says in Matthew that Abraham and Isaac are going to sit down together in the kingdom of God. How are they going to sit together if they don't know each other? The Bible speaks about our death being sleep. I went to sleep last night. My wife was there. I said, good night, honey. I love you. I woke up in the morning. I still knew her. I said, get up and fix my breakfast. And she's the same woman she used to be. She said, no, sir. (laughs) You don't like having fun? Why don't you go home now? Heaven's a place of relief. No hospitals. No graves. No little bus child will have to call us as one did last night, and say, my mama died. No one will ever go hungry. There'll be no drug dealers. No wars. No hurts. No ages. No wrinkles. No grave sites. No thirsting. No glasses. No blindness. No deafness. No heartaches. No runaway children. No cancer. No alcohol. No family problems. No misunderstandings. No divorce. No calories. And it gets on some of y'all's level. No abuse. Heaven. <clears throat> some years ago, I have no idea how many, I copied this down. It was so good it triggered my mind about this sermon. I want to read it to you. I can't say it all by memory. I want to read it to you. I, someone said this about heaven. Heaven is all the loving heart of God would desire for you. Heaven is all the knowing mind of God could design for you. Heaven is all the powerful hand of God could prepare for you. Heaven is all that's right for you. Heaven is rest for the weary traveler. Heaven is peace for the storm tossed. Heaven is soundness of mind for the troubled and fearful. My brother shall leap. I walk and talk. Heaven's home. Five-year-old was staying with her grandmother. 
she became very <clears throat> sick and the grandparents think, kept thinking it was homesick and I hope you'll listen to this because it's a kind of a play on words and you've got to catch it and uh, the grandmother said to the grandchild said are you homesick and she said no said I'm here sick do you catch it tell you one thing I thought of this as I thought of a family in our church I'm not called their name We've gone through 20-some years of suffering, 20-plus years of agony, carrying heavy burdens. What would I say to them? Here's what I'd say. For I reckon, I've been doing some figuring, been doing some counting, I reckon. The suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. When we get there, we only remember it. Old things are passed away. All things are made new. I'm kind of homesick, here sick, poor country. You don't know Christ, you need to know him as your Savior. He's a wonderful Savior. He's the only way you can get there. After he said, uh, I've got to prepare a place for you. Thomas said, you're going away. We don't know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you don't know Christ, you ought to get saved. Here this morning, you've been saved, but you never made it public in a church service. You ought to do that. If you're here this morning and need to get baptized, it's a time to get baptized, you ought to do that. If you ought to be a part of this church family, you ought to do that. Take care of that business at the start of this first year, first Sunday of the new year. We're going to sing a very familiar song. What a day that will be. Page number 63. If you'll stand with me, you need to respond. If you need to come to the Lord, to come to the altar, pray somewhere. Thank God for his goodness to you. Thank God for heaven. Pray for someone. Whatever you need to do, whatever the Spirit of God parted your heart to do, I want you to feel free to do this morning. Move in and out of your seat. You come as you need to come. What a day that will be. Page 63. We'll sing at least two verses. If you need to respond, you respond. Let's sing it.